If you've ever ridden a bus in England, then you've probably heard of Well, Arriva First Group's National Express Four of the five massive bus operators in England who dominate nearly the entire industry. So how did this happen and what does the future look like for buses in England? By the way, the fifth one is the Go Ahead Group. To understand how they got there, we need to go back to the industry revolution. Britain was booming. The cities across the nation filled to the brim with workers from the countryside who had migrated in mass in the hope of securing a job. The new working classes would rise in the morning and commence a daily commute from their homes in the slums, apartments or even the pavement to walk to their mills and factories. After a while, as explained by the much better Jay Foreman in his video about trams, they were introduced to the UK and spread to basically every urban centre. Though after the Second World War and the low cost of fuel, they fell out of use and the wiggled away across the UK. Emerging after the Second World War, the newly elected Labour government began to nationalise the transport sector and slowly began to take over control from the private companies. A few held out, but not long after, and thanks to the general political consensus, by 1962, all but a minute few buses were government controlled. But by the late 60s, passenger numbers across all transport in the UK fell dramatically, and while passenger numbers were still around 6 billion per year, having such an expansive national network became harder to justify. But as the aforementioned general political consensus, over buses meant they stayed nationalised. Until, like everything in the UK, Thatcher came along with a hammer and changed everything to recreate the UK in her image. Unlike the trains, Thatcher was happy to let the buses enter the private sector, and by the end of the decade nearly all the buses were privatised. And while for a time competition and regulation kept the industry competitive, by the dawn and the early days of the new decade it was clear who survived and who won. Use of aggressive competition, acquisitions and mergers, the five companies we know today consolidated the majority of the English bus industry and became the bus barons, dominating nearly all services in some capacity. So what does the future look like? Many metropolitan authorities have embarked on changing their current operations from a profit-driven method in which companies work more for themselves to a service model where the relationship becomes a partnership in which private companies operate a service as contractors. This method of implementation has already been introduced in Manchester and London, but that's a whole other kettle of fish. And the very new West Yorkshire Combined Authority are aiming to follow in their footsteps. In the last few years, the bus industry has faced a conundrum. They are more evidently being misunderstood and not embraced. They are neglected in a fashion. This neglect and wave to their usefulness seems to be commonplace across most of England, regaling them to have minimal support from their local authorities. Change within the bus industry, especially from my own experience, needs the support of local authorities and their understanding as well. The often marginal financials of bus operators often make getting more drivers, buses, staff, etc. more difficult and therefore they often find it difficult to please passengers, to which end they are unable to do anything about. The COVID-19 pandemic has, of course, made these issues worse. The country faces a massive shortage of drivers as they hold a similar stigma as lorry drivers in a sense, and not many aspire to become bus drivers. Trying to run competitively is now not really an option, and only those with deep pockets have been able to survive and will continue to survive. The buses in England and the Barons are unfortunately unstable at the moment, they are ignored as a solution to transit, with mass transit being the poster child of most councils, and therefore I can only hope that the industry keeps going and keeps evolving, because at the end of the day, they are needed. Thanks for watching, this video may be a bit sombre, but no progress tends to be made if you only stick to what you know. I hope you've enjoyed, and really do have a great day.